Hello guys, I'm Carl Bradshaw and this is Shop Around Motorsports and today we're testing the Avon Adventure tires. We have two different tires. We have the Trail Rider, which is currently mounted on this 2016 KTM 1190 Adventure R. And then we have the Trek Rider, which is the next tire that we're gonna be testing. We got both of them down here. We're gonna talk about some of the features and benefits of these two unique tires from Avon. The Trail Rider tire is a primarily street tire that can be ridden off-road. And the Trek Rider is gonna be a true 50-50 tire, according to Avon. You are gonna notice first off that the tread patterns of these two tires are very similar. Some of the key features that are gonna make the Trail Rider tire a, such a great street tire are gonna be the interlocking three-dimensional points hidden within the sipe. Let's dig a little deeper into those 3D sipes from the Trail Rider tire. The grooves expel water. They also create flex points on the tire, especially in the contact patch. This allows the Trail Rider tire to have increased stability and the sipes also enable the tire to warm up faster and cool down quicker. The tire also features a super rich silica compound. The silica increases the tire's performance in both low temperatures as well as increases wet grip. The rear tire has a triple compound tread and it's a radial tire to boot. Another feature that Avon says that they have pioneered is going to be the inverted front grooves. If you look at the front tire, it looks like it's mounted backwards, but that's actually the way Avon created the tire. They pioneered this years ago, and it has been adopted by a lot of the competition. Avon calls this the IFG front grooves, and it helps resist stepped wear over time and cupping on front tires. Helps the reduction of uneven wear, improving wet braking, stopping distances, and it provides smoother handling. When it comes to Avon's TE triple compound extrusion, is what they're calling it, the first compound is gonna be in the very center of the tire. It's gonna be a durable medium compound that's gonna give you improved mileage. The second compound is a soft compound found on the shoulders of the tire that give you maximum grip at high lean angles. The third compound is a low hystisterous compound that bonds the top two compounds to the main carcass of the tire. So today's test and the next test we do on the Trek Rider, we're really looking at the differences between these two tires. How much more street oriented is the Trail Rider over the Trek Rider? That is yet to be seen and that's what we're gonna be out testing. Now the other thing we're gonna test when we get to the next section is gonna be that Trek Rider. Is it really a 50-50 tire? Is it up there with the likes of the Anarchy Wild or the TKC80? I don't know, that's yet to be determined as we go out testing the Avon Trail Rider tire. Now, let's get busy. Now, how we have these tires currently set up is they're both at 30 PSI. That's the pressure that we're running all of these tires at throughout this test. Whoa, slippery. All right, obviously these tires are nice and cold. They're brand new, so there's a lot of things working against them. So I got this strip of black that I laid down as I attempted to wheelie leave in the driveway. Here's the second one. So the first thing I'm feeling out of the gate is the fact that these tires have a really quick breakover angle. Um, that could be part of that zero degree belt that they have in the tire. So down the center of the tire, the cords are actually tighter put together than they are over on the sides. That gives the center a lot of stability and then on the sides it allows it to have more flexibility. But when I just lean the bike over, it has a really quick breakover angle here on the side. Now, as with any brand new tire, we need to go scrub these things in. So we're gonna head down to the sand wash. That's a really easy and quick way to be able to scuff up that top layer of rubber so that we have some nice sticky rubber underneath. Once we do that, we'll head up into the mountains and we'll hit some highway, byway, backcountry roads, some fast twisties, and then we'll go find some more difficult dirt to get into to see how capable these things are at traversing up and down hilly terrain. Again, these tires from Avon are going to be a primarily street tire. They did not make these as a dirt tire. They are a gravel road tire for guys that want to do a little bit of off-road, getting into their campsite or to a specific overlook or destination that they're looking at. There it is, Chaparral Motorsports. If you need anything motorcycle or side-by-side -side related, Chaparral Motorsports is definitely one of the powerhouses when it comes to gear and accessories. 
160,000 square foot retail showroom. It is huge. We also have all of the OEM parts for all the vehicles that we sell, Honda, Kawasaki, KTM, Can-Am, Polaris. I mean, there's so many different brands that we sell. Uh, chances are we have the OEM parts that you are in need of. So one of the tests we want to put these tires through today are going to be rain grooved cement. See these grooves down here in the cement and how they wiggle all over the place? These things are torrential for certain types of tires. Typical 50-50 tires hate these rain grooves. And some of the tires we've tested in this test have acted really negatively against these rain grooves and others, you know, they really haven't cared a whole lot. So. Part of the test today is going to be able to, to see how this particular set of tires handles these things. And right now I can say that I'm not getting any extra wiggle in the handlebars, and that's typically what you see. You typically get this crazy undulation movement from the uh, tires coming down and hitting these grooves and just following them. It's not that the bike itself has anything wrong with it, it's just the tires want to follow those grooves in the road, so you end up getting this type of movement. I'm exaggerating it right now. Um, but I'm not getting that with these tires. These tires are feeling nice and planted. They feel really good. I really have to give Avon some credit. I haven't ridden any of their adventure tires as of yet, but I know that back in the day I had a Kawasaki ZX12R that used to eat the street tires. I mean, just maul them. 1200 miles, those things were absolutely toast. The amount of power that bike put down to the ground. Um, I then ended up trying a set of the Avon tires and they were able to give me like 6,000 miles. It was really impressive the amount of wear that they were able to eat. Now, part of the reason was they had a, you know, double the tread groove that some of the others had, which was nice. Um, but yeah, on that particular vehicle, it was like the perfect tire. Super sticky when they warmed up, but they lasted a long time. And Avon has really been known to do that. They have the new Cobra Chrome tire that came out for the cruiser market. That tire has been developed to have maximum traction, but it also gives you maximum longevity. So supposedly that tire is going to outwear most of the other V-twin or cruiser tires in the market. And that's what Avon is striving to do with these adventure tires here. Is they really want to give you a tire that's going to give you great longevity with maximum performance. All right, so this is going to be where we step off the pavement onto some dirt and down into the sand wash. All right, so we got traction control off, we got ABS off, and we're running in sport mode. Okay, here we go. Definitely less pickup than I've had on some of the other 8020 tires. Again, this is not designed to be a dirt tire. It's designed to be a street tire that can go off-road if you want to or need to. Now, my biggest concern is going to be the lack of side lugs on that front tire. That has proven to be a um, painful situation while out here testing. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. We're putting these tires to the test to see just exactly what they do. Now, leading into this corner, that was pretty nice. I was able to lean it over, give it some gas. It was able to find grip and go. It's pretty impressive. Now that front wheel, the front tire is feeling vague up there. I feel it dancing and kind of skipping a little bit. Let's see how that plays out for the rest of the day. Now I'm trying to lift the front end up over some of these little rises here. The front end's getting lighter, but it's not really lifting. All right, so now we're gonna come down into, whoo. I can definitely feel that we don't have lugs back there. The back end's already sliding around a little bit, as is the front. Whoa! Oh. Yep, not a sand tire. Now, what we should be able to do is get rolling fast enough that we'll be able to stay up on top of the sand here. That front is not giving me a good feeling though. We are all over the place. Whoa, swapping all over. I hope the Trek Rider tire does a much better job. That would be nice. We'll see. 
That'll be the next episode, the Trek Rider, Avon's 50-50 tire. Get it to stay up on top of the sand. Oh, here, look at this hard pack. It's like a freeway. Put my visor down. I'm going to give Eric a little bit of a Brody here. Not much traction, guys. Not much traction. Kill switch. Go second run. Definitely lack of traction. In the soft stuff for sure. Definitely challenging. I'm actually quite surprised at my lack of go. I mean, it's making a great track here in the ground. I mean, as far as tread pattern goes and tread depth, I would have thought that I would have been getting more momentum with this tire, but it's not. It's struggling pretty bad. I definitely wouldn't want to be stuck halfway up that hill having to make this tire go up that. But with some momentum, which momentum is your friend on these big bikes, I handled that with ease. All right, now let's take a look at the downhill braking aspect. It's not so bad. This is actually pretty moist though. So the fact that we're getting good traction there is not that surprising. Now let's run down through the section over here that has typically had really loose sand as well as lots of rocks. So as the tread on these tires aren't super deep, I don't know how they're gonna handle, oh, the rocks. We definitely know it's not doing very well in this deep sand, that's for sure. I really wanna see what the tire feels like over these rocks. Is it a really hard sidewall, which it really doesn't have the feeling of that has more of a very soft sidewall feel. So I really just want to see, is it going to be bouncy over these rocks or very conforming? First feel, very conforming over these rocks, but that, if you do run a lower pressure, we're running 30 PSI right now. If you're running a much lower pressure than 30 PSI, these rocks could tend to ding up your rim as the sidewall, these tires are pretty soft. Now, due to the fact that this here is a westward facing slope, you can see it's significantly more, oh, we're getting stuck right here. This tire is just churning back there. Ha, look at us when we first came down. What a mess. It hit that sand and just was like, bleh, no thank you. It's not really a hill climb, it's just the exit of the wash here, but you can see that because this faces the west, it has more sunshine during the day than that other one, and it is significantly drier. So let's see if our, Test results are any different here. Come on, go. Gotta get some momentum here, guys. Come on. Go, go, go. Oh yeah, still fine. Take a look at some of the other tests that we've done in this series. This ground was a lot drier. And even that little climb out of there proved to be a little bit tricky. So Avon, you're getting a little bit of love today from the uh, moisture that's in the ground. It's gonna allow this trail rider to perform even better than it would if it was a little bit drier out. So take a look at my skid to a stop here. You can see that we're disrupting just a very small section of dirt um, and we're really not getting a whole lot of traction down there. But coming up here is another interesting thing. Take a look at the track that this laid down when I came around this corner earlier, it looks like we're displacing a lot of dirt. It looks like we'd be getting much more forward momentum than we actually are, or than we actually did when we were down there in the sand wash. Pretty interesting, my friends. 
again that's why we're out here testing just to see exactly what these tires are going to do as compared to their advertised specs or bullet points that the manufacturer says that we're supposed to experience on these tires so far this tire is one of my least favorite tires down there in the sand even though it has a, a tread characteristic that is similar to some of the better performing tires that we've had out here. All right, here is Old Waterman Canyon Road. This is where we're gonna do some backcountry roads today. This is one of my favorite little sections of this particular test. It's a little backcountry road that has tar snakes and gravel and rocks that have fallen down from the road. Sometimes there's actually a flood where that uh, stream up here actually floods across the road, allows us to have a little bit of wet pavement to kind of play on. It's kind of neat. So again, we're running 30 PSI in these tires. We have no trash control on and we have no ABS on. Now some of the other more street oriented tires, like right here, we look at the brakes and they lock up. These are locking up pretty easy too. And that rear end's pretty light, so it's kind of to be expected. I would have thought with the stickier nature of these particular tires though, it wouldn't have been so easy to make that back lock up. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to lean this thing over and see how it handles these twisties here. How sticky. Oh, that feels really good. Is that compound going to be when we get leaned over? Right there, the guys pin full open. The front end starting to lift just a little bit coming out of those corners. Just like that. Oh, yeah. Definitely one of the stickier tires we've run on this test, that's for sure. Really good confidence expiring feel here in the twisties. Now some of the others have been sketchy on the front end. I'm going to come in heavy on the front brake. Oh man, great stopping. No anti-lock properties happening because we don't have any anti-lock on at the moment. But just how they feel coming into corners, they feel really planted. Front tire feels really sticky. And back tire is not backing in at all. That thing is just planted. I'm definitely able to get into these corners a little more spirited than I have on some of the other tires. Now, real quick, before we move on from here, these tires stick like glue. These are amazing as far as the grip goes. You can take a look at the finite pieces of rubber in here. Man, it's like little teeth just grabbing onto this pavement. Man, the front tire feels amazing. But this back tire is giving me performance that I have not felt on many of these adventure tires at all. You can see we're using the entire tire all the way over to the side. There's not a single skip or a slide. This thing is just sticking like glue to the pavement. Now, interestingly enough, now that we've been pushing this tire quite a bit, take a look at how open that 3D sipe is. You can actually look down inside there and see those teeth. This is the corner that I've been leaning more heavily on in this little section here, but you can see that side sipes are definitely opening and opening up more than we're getting here in the center. Pretty interesting. speed twisties in here. Up here on Highway 18, rolled completely over. We're doing about 70 miles an hour into this 40 mile an hour corner here. Super sticky. Now we're going to come up to Marshall Peak over here. This is going to be a relatively rocky road. Like I said, some of the other tires we've tested in the 80-20 category were extremely like rock solid hard. And they kind of bounced off these rocks and made a very rough ride. But I can already tell you, right now I may not be getting lots of traction there on the back. I mean the back end's kicking sideways quite a bit but the actual feeling of the rubber over the top of these rocks is actually quite nice. 
Yeah, that back end is just sliding around all over the place. Again, it's not getting traction on the rocks, but it is conforming over the top of them, making the ride a little bit smoother. Good one. All right, this next section of road here is typically larger rocks that we bounce all over on. Take a look at these guys. While we are bouncing over the tops of them, these tires absolutely have lots of conformity over the top. I'm curious to see what that really soft rubber compound is gonna look like though. Is it getting chewed up or is it just taking these rocks in stride? We'll have to see what they look like once you get up to the next stop. All right, here we come up to the little hill climb section. Now this dirt right here is really wet. You can see how dark it is. It's gonna give this tire much more of an advantage than some of the other tires we've tested out here when it's been extremely dry. And I'm not even trying right now. Whoa, sideways. Whoa. All right, so I wasn't try trying, but man, it sure broke loose easy. Not having large lugs there on the side Man, that thing just stepped out to the side in the rear. Something fierce. Now my first test coming downhill here is going to be as if I were fully loaded, you know, on a big GS or something. I would want to be able to have traction while going downhill fully loaded because you wouldn't be bombing down super fast. I'm getting a lot of slide out of that rear tire, but the front tire is actually holding pretty decent, a lot better than some of the other tires we've had out here. It's actually quite impressive. I guess a lot of that does have to do with the fact that this dirt is tacky. You can see how wet it is underneath. Um, some of the tires that failed in this section, it was really dry, soft, and loose. All right, now I'm gonna take it for more of a run standstill instead of a running start. Again, this tire is getting a little bit of a cheat action because this ground is so so wet, but we are having a little bit of a struggle getting that back end to hook up and push us up the hill, if you will. I definitely wouldn't want to be stranded or stopped halfway up this hill if the conditions were any drier at all. You can see that we are getting some rocks stuck down into the tread here. That nice sticky compound. Done a little bit of hill climbing on them. You can see, really see these. Look at that. That 3D sipe, now that it has dirt stuck in the center of it, interesting. So this is what they look like when they're closed. You can see they're nice and smooth. When they get open, they get this little zigzag ripple effect. Pretty interesting. Tire testing, riding motorcycles, and views such as this. Absolutely spectacular. Avon Trail Riders, man, if you travel mostly on road, but you get off roads some gravel roads here and there, these things are a really good choice for your big BMW or your KTM or your Super T or your Triumph. I mean, they do a really phenomenal job on the pavement and they've done pretty good off-road. Now I'm going to be taking these down a more technical section of dirt road. Some of it, a section of road that has been very painful on some other tires. I'm going to take it a little bit easier than I have on some of those others just because I've already found out the limits, if you will, of this particular tire. All right, this is a section of road that has proven to be challenging on a lot of the more street-oriented tires that we've had in this test. The reason is that tire wants to skip out or slide sideways on these rocks right here. Now, something interesting that's happened, I mean, it's, it is happening. I'm not getting great traction here for sure by any stretch of the imagination. Definitely sliding towards that hole. But a difference in this tire than some of the other tires that have struggled in this same section is the fact that that front tire is really conforming around these rocks instead of skipping completely over them and not having any traction at all. If it wasn't for the soft nature of the sidewall and that rubber compound, that section of trail that we just came over would have been much more sketchy, if you will. There you go, about five hours out there on the road, about 150 miles total traveled in lots of different terrains. We have put this Avon Trail Rider tire to the test. As far as performance go, these tires did extremely well for street characteristic or street use. You can actually see the line here on either side where that compound differs from the center over here to the side. 
the stickiness of the sidewall of this tire, you can see where we've actually worn down quite a bit of this up there in the twisties today. Man, but this tire stuck like glue in the corners. Really, really like it. Once warmed up, I was able to wheelie the heck out of this thing as well. You can see where we have some sections here that are a little bit more worn down than others. Um, and then we can see sections of the tread where our rocks up there really wrecked havoc on the soft nature of the compound. Avon, I think you've done a great job at giving us a tire that is a mostly street tire that can do off-road proficiently. If you're curious about the other tires in the test, the first link in the description below is going to be to the playlist for all of the nearly 30 tires that we put to the test. And we're going to have a full detailed breakdown here to come. So please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for that. I'm Kyle Bradshaw. Thank you for watching Chaparral Motorsports. Appreciate your business. Until next time, take care and ride safe out there.